Hey everyone, welcome back to my channel. If you are new to my channel, hello, welcome. Um, my name is Brie. I am a 21 year old college student at UC Berkeley and I'm also a young mommy to a one year old little boy. So that's a little background on me. If you don't know, if you've never watched any of my videos, welcome. If you have, welcome back and just keep watching this video if you're interested in hearing about my labor and delivery story. So the reason why I wanted to talk about my labor and delivery, for, for starters, I had a really intense birth. It was unexpected. It was early. I was 32 weeks pregnant at the time, so my son was about two months early. So it was unexpected. It was intense. It was really personal to me, and it took me a really long time to want to film this video just because of how personal the experience was for me and Ray. I went through a lot, my body went through a lot, Ezra went through a lot, and so it is really personal, but it's real and it does happen. And when I was going through everything that I was going through, I was desperately trying to find women and other females who had went through something similar to what I was going through because I just needed advice. I needed to see that they were okay at the end and that you know their babies were okay no matter what the stances was and I just needed some reassurance and I couldn't find any. So I thought if I did this video, it could help somebody else out that, that was like me over a year ago, um, trying to make sense of it all because it was a lot. I was 20 at the time, so it was a lot for a 20 year old to go through and, it, and I, didn't, I didn't think that was gonna happen to me. You never know what's gonna happen. You never think going into your pregnancy that you're gonna have issues, you're gonna have complications. And so when it happened to me, I was shocked. And I didn't really have time to process it all because it happened all so fast. So that's kind of why I want to break it down into a timeline because I think that's going to better help you guys understand what happened and how everything happened because if I just go into the day, you're going to be like kind of confused. So I'm going to start off a week prior to my birth just so you understand a little bit better and just so I can better explain it to you guys so whoever is going through this if you're pregnant I don't want to scare you but it is definitely good to know what can occur um, so yeah so just keep watching if you're interested in watching my labor and delivery video Let's get into the video so I'm gonna start off on July 14th 2017 that is when I began to become really swollen and you know if you've never been pregnant before if you're a male um, pregnant women get swollen so that is a common side effect to being pregnant especially in your third trimester however the swollen that I was getting was intense it was insane I was my legs were like two times the size of my regular legs my face was so swollen I might include pictures in this video I might not just because it it, it is kind of like I don't want to say graphic but it is really personal and, and it shows me in a really vulnerable state so I might not show pictures because I'm already telling you the story but we'll see we'll see what I decide to do but I was so swollen my nose was so swollen my face was so swollen like everything on my face was swollen my arms were everything on my body was swollen um, my hands it was it was really intense and you know I knew it wasn't normal and you know I kept sending pictures to my family and they were like that's not normal Brie and Ray Ray the thing is Ray didn't really see me in the mornings because he would leave for football practice kind of early in the morning and so he wouldn't see me right when I woke up so by the time he got home from practice the swelling had had worn down because I would wake up the swelling would be there and then by the time like a two hours later um it would it would lessen so it wasn't as intense when he got home so he didn't really see it but I, I would show him pictures and he was like that's not normal you know nobody was saying that's normal and so you know it was weird and so you know, I just I kept going on about my business and I was like well maybe it'll go down maybe it's going away we'll see I didn't think it was anything really serious um, and then on Sunday that Sunday July 16th I started getting really bad chest pains and it wasn't like I was having heartburn um, 
couldn't breathe it would like knock the wind out of me i would i would be just sitting there like tense because i couldn't breathe I didn't want to drink anything i didn't want to eat anything i didn't want to do anything because i was just in so much pain i can't even explain the amount of pain i was in that my chest was in it felt like my heart was about to stop it felt like i was having a heart attack and it was so scary and i you know i called the advice nurse and i was telling her like this like i do not feel good this is not a normal feeling i've never had this feeling before and she told me like just drink a lot of water keep yourself hydrated and um you know if it progresses take some ibuprofen if it progresses come on in you know we can check you out and they kind of like blew it off as if like it was nothing like i was kind of being dramatic and you know so i was like okay we'll see how it feels in two hours and so me and ray went to go eat um like an hour later and i was i couldn't even eat because of how much pain i was in like my chest was just like caving in i felt like i felt like i honestly was about to have a heart attack and my heart was about to stop and i was like no this is not normal and i was like i was calling my family i was telling them like this is not normal like like something is wrong with me and i was nervous i was i didn't know i didn't know what it could be you know and i didn't i didn't know i didn't know so we went into the emergency room and they did some blood work on me they did some urine tests they admitted me into labor and delivery and they basically said that nothing was wrong with me like i was fine um they said you know the swelling that you have is is normal for pregnant for pregnant women um you're just probably really dehydrated so just make sure you're drinking a lot of water since it is summer and so they sent me home and i was like okay um and so that wednesday the 19th i had an ob appointment for my 31 week appointment and so that was when i saw my doctor and you know i can talk to her about the symptoms i was having and everything like that and at your appointments they make they test your urine and um i had three plus protein in my urine which is a high amount of protein for a pregnant woman to have and it is one of the biggest signs that you have preeclampsia so preeclampsia is a condition that only occurs when you are pregnant so only pregnant women can have preeclampsia and it is characterized by high blood pressure protein in urine and extreme swelling so that is what preeclampsia is Preeclampsia is extremely dangerous when you're pregnant because if you have really high blood pressure, you're at risk of having a, a stroke and, and or a seizure. So it's really dangerous. It's not something to take lightly. So basically, after I talked to my OB, I was showing her all my swelling. I was showing her pictures of all my swelling. She was like, no, oh, this is not normal. This is not okay. And I was funny side note i was like well my baby shower is like in four days so we can hold off on everything till then right and she was like i don't think you're gonna be going to your baby shower and like i turned to ray and i was like, I like whispered to him like we're still going because i was not about to miss my baby shower and i didn't i didn't understand how dangerous this was for me at the time so she told me i immediately needed to go head over to labor and delivery at the hospital um to be admitted because they needed to check me out and at that point i was kind of not still not understanding how how serious and important this was um so we walked over there got me checked in long story short they did some blood work my grandma is a labor and delivery nurse and so she was on the phone with the ray the whole time they were doing tests on me telling them like make sure you're telling them this make sure you're telling them that um because she wanted to make sure they were doing what they were supposed to do because if i wasn't treated properly i could have died within minutes you know if they weren't if they didn't put me on certain medications if they didn't do certain measures i could have died at any point so she wanted to really make sure that I was being taken care of even though she wasn't there at the time so she was just on the phone full time with Ray making sure that communication was up to date. Once my test came back she my the doctor rushed and was like you're being transferred immediately to Kaiser Santa Clara. I was at Kaiser San Jose. Um, they don't have a NICU and at that point I was flagged as high risk and at risk of premature labor. 
And so she was like, you're getting transferred right now. And like immediately, a whole bunch of nurses came in. They were taking my blood pressure. They put a catheter in me. They gave me a shot of beta-methylazone and that was to um, speed up the process of the baby's lungs just in case he did arrive early because he was so young. Um, that medicine was just gonna make sure that when he was born, he was gonna be able to breathe on his own and he was gonna be okay. And so luckily I did get that shot. And so, so many things are going on. Like Ray was trying to update my family about like what was going on, that they were transferring me. All these nurses were talking to me, taking my blood pressure. My blood pressure was up the roof. It was so high because I was freaking out. I was bawling, I was crying, I was shaking. I just, in that moment, I knew that like something wasn't right. and. It scared me. It was so scary to know that I don't know what's going to happen. And so, you know, nobody knew what was going to happen to me. Nobody knew what was going to happen to the baby. They were going to do the best they could, but who knows, you know? And so they, you know, got me ready for transfer really quick and then put me in the ambulance. Ray couldn't go with me in the ambulance because it was small and like usually you're not allowed to have people in the ambulance with you when you ride in the ambulance, that's just standard. So he drove to the ambulance, he met me there, he was there already by the time I got there. And the whole time in, in the ambulance, I was like crying the whole time. And then the guys in there were trying to talk to me and they're like, you're gonna be okay, you're gonna be okay. And I was in so much pain from my chest, from my swelling, I had, head, I had an extreme headache. That's another thing I forgot to mention. When I was in the hospital, prior to them transferring me, I had the worst headache. And they wouldn't let me eat anything. They only gave me some ibuprofen. My head hurt so bad. I I couldn't even take it. Like I, I've never had a headache that bad before. And all I wanted to do was just go to sleep because it hurt so bad. And that was another thing about my preeclampsia is that that was a big sign was my headache that I was having so when I arrived at the Kaiser Santa Clara they started me on magnesium and that was going to lower my blood pressure to ensure that I didn't have a seizure or a stroke because at the time my blood pressure was so high I was gonna I could have had a seizure or stroke at any moment like that was their main concern is that I was going to seize out soon because how high my blood pressure was, it wasn't normal. And so, you know, that was a really big concern and it was really scary. And so they started me on mag. They finally let me eat. I was so happy because I was so hungry. And yeah, so they just kept me on monitors to make sure that I was always good with the baby. I was doing okay. And I, once I was on the mag, my headache stopped for sure. Um, I felt less like dizzy. I felt less my heart was you know calming down So I felt a little bit more relaxed. I finally went to sleep like it was like 12 by the time I got transferred or something like that. I don't actually remember but I finally went to sleep and My family ended up driving up that night So they were there the next morning on Thursday morning and so they saw me and they visited me and Thursday the next day was a day that I had a whole bunch of doctors come to talk to me. My high risk doctor, um, neonatal nurses for preemie babies, anesthesiologists, all these different kind of doctors came in to talk to me because I was a high risk patient and they wanted to inform me which was great of all of the things that would occur if I were to go into preterm labor and what would happen, which was really nice because I'm the type of person that loves to know everything. I'm extremely like anxious about everything, so I need to know. And it was really nice to know, but it was also a lot of information to take in and it was scary and it was intense. It was an intense few days. And so when the high risk doctor came in, at that point they told me, okay, you're 32 weeks pregnant today. We are going to keep you in this hospital till you're 34 weeks. So I was going to stay in the hospital for two weeks. And then at 34 weeks, they're going to induce your labor. And I was going to have that baby then. At the reason why they wanted to keep me to 34 weeks is because the baby was at optimal growth at that point. And so 34-week babies have a little bit better outcome than younger babies. 32 weeks, the week that my baby was born at, is, it was good too. Luckily, he was 
very developed, pretty good. Luckily, he got the betamethasone shot. Um, he was a pretty healthy baby. He was small, but he was pretty healthy. So they wanted to keep him to 34 weeks just so he had a little bit more development going because they grow a lot. They develop a lot within two weeks. And so that's why they wanted to keep me for two more weeks. Um, and so that was the plan. I was going to say for two more weeks and my labor is going to be induced. So I was, I was expected to just be chilling in the hospital for the next two weeks, unfortunately. It kind of didn't hit me because everything was happening so fast. I was in so much pain. I wasn't feeling like myself. Um, I was so swollen. I couldn't even walk around. I was so swollen. It, like, you cannot even imagine how swollen I was. I couldn't even walk because I was so heavy. I couldn't even walk. And although, after they told me all that news, on Friday, they told me that I could be off mag because my blood pressure had dropped a lot so they took me off a mag um they let me walk around the labor and delivery unit because i was no longer at a fall risk so it was nice because you know me and ray got to walk around the labor and delivery unit i got to get out of my room and just kind of explore a little bit um it was really hard for me to walk because i was so heavy but i was just happy to get out happy to see people and talk to people and it made me feel a little bit better you know and I was allowed to take a shower because before I wasn't, um, because I was at fall risk and, you know, they didn't want anything to happen to me. So that was Friday. My family decided to go home that night just so that they can prepare for two more weeks because we thought we had two more weeks till the baby was coming. So they're going to go back home, go about their lives, and then come back when I was going to be induced. And surprise, surprise, literally... The next like hours after they left it was about 3 30 um, my doctor came in my room actually <clears throat> let's let's back up so Friday night I was starting to feel kind of icky again I was having really bad chest pains I wasn't feeling good I didn't really want to eat anything I just didn't feel good and you know the, the nurse I had she gave me this concoction of this drink and um, she said it was supposed to help with chest pain. So I took it, it helped a little bit. Um, I still felt like I couldn't breathe. So they put me on the oxygen mask. That didn't help at all. That made it worse, to be honest. At that point, they put me on the monitors to check the baby because uh, since I was doing better, they took me off a of mag. I was no longer being monitored 24-7 for the baby, so they just monitored me every three hours, I believe. And so she's like, okay, it's time to monitor you. She put the bell on me, and she was monitoring the baby and all that good stuff. And she came in about an hour later, and she was like, have you been like feeling the baby move at all? And I was like, yeah, he moves every now and then. He doesn't move like he usually, he hasn't been moving like he usually is, but he's been moving. She's like, okay. And she's like, I want you to drink this juice, you know, that the, the sugar will help the baby start moving. I was like, okay. I drank it. It didn't work. Um, and she came back with these, like, little vibrating tools, and she put them on my belly. And they're supposedly supposed to help, like, you know, make the baby move because the vibrations will wake them up. Or, you know, the vibrations are, like, a funny sensation to them, so they're supposed to move off of that. And the baby wasn't responding to those. And she's like, I'm going to be back. And five minutes later, the doctor came in and she was like, so we're going to be going in for an emergency C-section right now because you're not doing too good. Your heart rate is dropping. The baby's heart rate is dropping. The baby is not doing good at all. You guys are not doing good at all. So we need to get him out right now. And I was like, what? And I immediately started bawling because that night they just told me I had two more weeks so I wasn't prepared for this and I was crying and she's like okay what why are you crying like you know what are you scared about and I just I was like I didn't I wasn't expecting this like I, I didn't want a c-section for one I wanted a natural birth I was so early in my pregnancy um, I didn't know what to expect and Ray was over in the bed because there's like a little bed in my room and he was sleeping and he's a pretty heavy sleeper so he didn't hear us talking and like I kept looking at him and like wanting them to wake him up because I was just like I needed him there with me because I was freaking out he like you know he eventually woke up and he was there and he was like there's no way you guys can like wait there's no way you guys can just let her have vaginal and they're like no like 
he needs to come out now like they're not gonna make it if he does not get out right now and so she's like within the next 30 minutes it was like 15 minutes literally i was being wheeled into the operation room and they were working so fast there were so many nurses there were so many doctors around me they were working so fast to get this baby out and um they gave me my spinal tap right while ray was calling on my family and friends because he couldn't be in there while they gave you the spinal tap anyways um not sure why but that's just their protocol he was calling on my family and friends and the c-section began so um my baby was born at 4 2 a.m on july 22nd 2017 he did really good for being a preemie baby really good he um he did fine he was just really small he was three pounds seven ounces when he was born so he was tiny it's a little thing but he did really good um he had to stay in the NICU for a month I will do a whole separate video on like a NICU stay if you guys want to see that because it's that's another story in itself so but yeah he had to stay in the NICU for a month and that was just because he had to learn to eat on his own and all that good stuff so um yeah so I gave birth at 32 weeks pretty much two months early and it was the scariest thing of my life and um on my they um, they didn't tell me this but on my chart they it did say that they had to resuscitate me which means that my heart stopped and they had to restart it um i don't remember that ray doesn't remember that so i don't know but it says that in my chart so yeah i i got lucky because i could have died and ezra could have died but we didn't luckily we had the best team of doctors and nurses like amazing i really really loved them they they treated us so good it's funny it's not funny but after i gave birth and everything like my high-risk doctor came in so we ended up testing her placenta after i gave birth and it turns out the reason why the baby's heart rate dropped significantly was because my placenta died basically and the placenta is what is attached to the baby's umbilical cord and feeds the baby all the nutrition they need to survive and my 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 placenta died so without the placenta the baby wasn't gonna progress and live and so if it wasn't for that nurse for being so like on top of her job who knows what have, who would have happened because she knew something wasn't right and it had nothing to do with him it was all because basically my body couldn't handle pregnancy and as sad as it is to say that you know i couldn't handle pregnancy in that sense nobody could have i couldn't have done anything to prevent it it's not a it's not a disease it's not something that happens that you could do to prevent it it happens it just happens and so that's the kind of scary thing about it you know like you you don't know if it will happen to you or not and if i do have any other children in the future there's like a 60 percent chance that it will happen to me again but this time we'll know that i'm high risk and they'll put me on medication and they'll take certain precautions so i'm gonna go into a little bit about how it was after i gave birth after i had my c-section um because that's kind of important too if you have severe preeclampsia because after your baby most of the time you're not just cured um of your high blood pressure and everything and so i had to stay in the hospital for about a week and a half after i gave birth so which is pretty long because most women don't stay longer than like four or five days so i stayed a pretty long time because my blood pressure was still pretty high um and so they wanted to make sure that I was under control before they sent me home because if they sent me home and I had a seizure or a stroke, not good. So um, they just wanted to make sure I was good before they sent me home. They had me on medication. They still had me on magnesium. Um, the day I gave birth, I couldn't see Ezra for 24 hours, which was really sad because I was still on a lot of medication and I was still um, not like stable. I was stable, like I was like, I'm awake and everything, but I couldn't walk on my own. I was at a fall risk. They couldn't even like let me wheel over there, which sucked. So I couldn't see him for 24 hours. So Ray 
and my family were the only people who could see him so um i was sad but i saw so many pictures ray took so many pictures and videos of him for me so i was it's like i was there in spirit and then the next morning i went to go see him like right when i woke up and i was also so drugged up from the magnesium from like my spinal tap um by the way spinal tap i don't even remember it because i was freaking out so much and <laughs> you know i don't even remember if it hurt or not so i couldn't tell you but um i was so drugged up i was just so drugged up they had me on so many things like for pain for my c-section they just had me on so much stuff i don't people were talking to me i don't even know what people were saying half the time ray was like pumping for me like like hand expressing my boobs for me for my for my milk to give to ezra i was i was just so out of it and you know since i told you my family left that same day um like the night before i gave birth they like they literally when ray called them and told them she's going into emergency section they just got home literally and so they all packed their stuff up back up and they all came back up to see me again um and so they were there maybe five hours after ezra was born and so you know they got to see him they were there to support me and i was in a lot of pain pain once i was able to start moving around and stuff i started feeling better each and every day it probably took me about a good two weeks to feel somewhat normal after my c-section because the first time you walk you can't really walk straight because of your incision it's puffy down there it's just a whole it's a whole thing if you want me to do a whole video about postpartum life after a c-section i could totally do that but that's a whole another story as well as like the nikki story so if you want one of those, I can totally do those for you, but just let me know. So all in all, my labor and delivery, I thought it was really scary. It was really intense. Um, I think about it all the time. It's been a year and a month now since it happened. Life was in extreme danger. Ezra's life was in extreme danger. And, you know, if they would have waited any more time, who would have known what would have happened? And so I really do this thank God for looking over me that day and looking over Ezra that day because he pulled through for us. You know, he really pulled through for us. And so, um, you know, if you are going through this, if you have gone through this or, you know, you've just been diagnosed or you're just pregnant, just know that everything will work out how it's supposed to. Just cling to your support system. I hope this video did any good for you because... You know you're not alone things like this do happen and no you know and you know you go into your pregnancy thinking you're gonna have a healthy baby you're gonna have a great pregnancy and everything will be fine and sometimes it's not that and you know i feel like i was gypped my pregnancy because i missed the whole last eight to nine months like to miss two months of pregnancy and so you know i didn't get to take maternity pictures i didn't get to have a real baby shower i had a baby shower after but i wasn't pregnant anymore um and so I feel like I missed a lot of things being pregnant and you know I don't I don't mean that in a selfish way but um I had a really good pregnancy up until that last week before I was diagnosed with severe preeclampsia so take it all in you know pregnancy is a beautiful thing and if something like this does occur just know whatever your belief system is whoever you believe has higher power just know that they're looking out for you just cling to your support system because you're going to need them. Even if you don't have something like this going on, I'm sure labor and delivery is hectic. Like if you have like a vaginal birth, you know. Um, yeah, I didn't get to have a real labor. I didn't have contractions. I didn't feel one contraction. Nothing. So... I had a unique story and... You know, first time mom that happening to me was just, I was, I was shook because I, me and Ray had no idea this was going to happen. And so I hope this video helped you. If you have any questions down below, please leave them for me. If you have any video requests, please let me know. Follow me on all my social medias. They'll be down below. Thank you so much for watching. Like if you like the video. Subscribe. And so thanks for watching.